Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion on the relationship among different organs. The first we're going to introduce the, is the liver and the spleen. The relationship between the liver and the spleen are many manifested on digestion and also the formation and movement of the blood. So the liver controls the flow, the qi, the qi regulation. The spleen receives the qi, which is from which is the middle jiao. The receive and decompose the food and water, or in charge as the spleen and stomach in charge of the digestive system. Spleen. The function of the spleen in charge of the transportation and transformation of food and water. So this transportation and transformation, the movement, the activities actually also rely on the qi regulation. We need the regular qi movement to help. The other aspects in these two organs is the formation of the blood. Where the blood come from? So that's from the middle jaw. Middle jaw, the spleen receive the food and then transform into qi. The qi travels to the heart. But where, while the qi travels to the heart, this process would need the lung, the liver function of qi regulation. So the the little liver need to make sure that the qi flow is in order. So that's how the liver can help to benefit the formation of the blood and specifically for the movement as well. The liver stores the blood. The spleen create or kind of create although it goes to the heart so but the source the blood origin from the spleen and the liver stores the blood and can control the volume of the blood in circulation so that's the relationship between these two if the the liver functions of storing blood its function we can call it bleeding and also this bleeding might relate to the spleen because the spleen also control the blood within the vessel especially for the lower part of the body so as you can see here the bleeding or the blood is related to both the liver and the spleen so the blood and the digestive system digestive function are the, the agents between these two organs. This relationship reflects in the pathological changes. Then these kind of changes sometimes we call them the impairment between the wood and the and the earth. That's the over at or in south of over at or in south. The next relationship is the spleen and the kidney. We mainly re refer to the innate and acquired qi, also the water metabolism. So the spleen and the kidney. In one is the innate, that's the kidney. We said the kidney store, stores the essence. And this is essence mostly is the, the innate. The innate essence store in the kidney. And then the acquired essence also, the acquired essence is from the spring, from the middle jaw, from the food. So it's from the spring. And then the innate essence should be nourished by the acquired essence 
so that the relationship between the spleen and kidneys in terms of the essence, the innate essence needs to be nourished by the acquired essence, which is from the spleen. So that's the from the essence aspect. The other is the the water metabolisms, the transportation and transformation. These process of the spleen would need the the water metabolism involved, and the, this water metabolism also, also need the kidney yang. Otherwise, you'll be too cold. And also the kidney in charge of the storing, the storing of essence, also the storing of the water, the body fluid that's in charge of the, the water. So these two functions, these two aspects actually reflect in the, in the body fluid. And also you can see from the five elements, the spleen, the spleen is the earth, the kidney is the water. So they have the control relationship. That's why the, the normal or the regular water metabolism function rely on the balance or the the relate the movement or the regular function of these two organs. In the pathological changes, we also can see, such as the, the example at the bottom, fatigue, poor appetite, just loose stool, and then this kind of patient may develop into edema. That's from spleen deficiency into kidney. And also, it can reverse edema patient, which from the kidney problem after a long time also can develop into poor appetite, called the spleen affected the spleen problem. So these symptoms, although we put the symptoms together, but these symptoms are actually symptoms we can see from our clinical practice due to the fact that. The spleen is considered as the acquired qi, the source of the acquired qi. The kidney is considered as the, the source or where the innate qi or an essence stores. So in our treatments, there are two schools of the treatments. One focus on the spleen, focus on the acquired essence, which also acquired qi. So this school, they believe that all nutrition, all nutritions are come from spleen, which is considered as the acquired qi, and this is the most important aspect for our health, because all our activities need the nutrition, which is from the spleen. So they develop the theories of tonifying the spleen, or develop uh, all the theories to focus on the spleen for all kinds of diseases, the, such as Li Dongyuan in the Jin Dynasty, the four masters in Jin Dynasty. So he, he believed that the spleen, the acquired aspect is the most important. And during the treatment, we need to focus on the spleen. The other school that believe that the kidney essence is the most essential because that's innate and everything was developed from the innate essence. So the innate essence is the key aspect of the human health and longevity. So for this school, they focus during the treatments, they focus on the innate aspects. They use methods to tonify the kidney to benefit the kidney to try to build a better body constitution, which is from the innate condition. These two schools still are still have these schools still debate have debates 
nowadays in uh, daily practice or uh, clinical practice we sometimes focus on the spleen sometimes focus on the kidney it depends on the specific condition of the patient the next will be the liver and the kidney the liver and the kidney the first the same origin of axons and blood distributing and storing so the same origin of axons and blood refers to the kidney stores axons the blood and uh, the liver stores blood and the axons and the blood can mutually generate each other the axons can transform into blood the blood is the source of the axons so this is the relationship between them as you can see from the demonstration on the right side that's the axons and blood why they can mutually generate each other that's because they all come from qi or they all can transform into qi so that's the agent in between because they can transform into each other then that's the they have they can create a relationship between each other and also both of these two stays in the lower jaw The distributing and storing actually refers to the function of a qi regulation of the liver to control the movement. The kidney, the, the storing function of the kidney to store. So these two, one is in, one is yang, one should move, one should stay. This should be the balance, such as the the control of urination the control of sweating these are all distribute the ref reflection of the distributing and storing and also from the five elements the liver is the wood the kidney is fire the, the kidney is water the water can generate the wood so it's very similar you water the plant with the water so the, the kidney can generate the wood these are from the five elements the mother and son's relationship the kidney in the last aspect the kidney in and kidney yang liver in and liver yang they also from the one same source, the reason why is the kidney in and liver in also part of the essence and blood. So these are actually the same aspects, but we describe in different way. The blood, the 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 blood stored in the liver, we also can call the the blood the liver in. Is part of the liver in. The liver in include the liver flow, body fluid in the liver also includes the blood in the liver. So that's the same the mutual generation generation of the essence and blood, then that's also the same relationship between the kidney in and liver in. Yang and liver yang, they also benefit. They also can benefit each other. So these, why they can be together or the relationship, that's because in our pathological changes in clinic, we always can see some kidney symptoms or liver symptoms happens together on one person. That's why we will think about what's the relationship between them and how to adjust the function, how to regulate their movements. Okay, so next category we're going to talk about the relationship between sound and full organs.
So as you can see previously, all the examples we discussed here is the relationship between the between two sound organs. Now we discuss the sound and fu organs. This relationship will rely on the different different characteristics of sound organs and fu organs. Sound organs they need to store, they can't discharge. The fu organs can receive food, but they need to discharge. They should not store store. So the dysfunction or impairment of full organs will, will have a lot of symptoms of the storing which they should not store. So the, the treatment towards the full organs we also focus on recover the transporting function, the discharging function of the full organs. We do, we do not want the full organs to store food in there. So we try to recover the discharging function, receive and discharge. And also the sound and full organs. We also will focus on the couple's organs which is uh, heart and small intestine, lung and large intestine. That's because from the pathological changes, the heart problem, sometimes we can see structures such as from the heart heat or heart fire. Someone they suffer from too much heat in the heart or too much fire in the heart. In this condition, the patient will have irritation or back temper as well and also palpitation. The patient also can have mouth ulcer or tongue ulcer, ulcer. And then in this condition, we also can see from the urine, that the patient's urine may be darker or may have less urine. But you said the urine, why we consider as small intestine. Then here you need to remember that the where does the urine come from? The water is from the small intestine, the function of the small intestine. So in this case, we, we think that the heart problem can reflect in the small intestine. So that's the one of the examples. The other example is from the blood circulation. The heart governs the blood the blood, the small intestine, receive food and digest food. This function, in order to function well, you also need the nutrition from the blood or the qi from the blood. So blood is actually the most essential substance for all, con all kinds of activities. But when we talk up about the blood, don't forget about that there is qi in the blood. So no matter our mental activities, psychological activities, or physical movements, are all based on qi and blood. The formation of the of the blood also can reflect in the relationship between the heart and small intestine. That's because we said uh, the source of the qi, which forms the blood, is from middle jiao, which is from the spleen and stomach. But in the meantime, when we study the small intestine, we also mentioned that the, small, the function of the small intestine also includes in the in the function of with in the function of the spleen. So the function of the small intestine also includes in the function of the spleen. So the food and body full and body fluid is a stop from the spleen from the small intestine, you transfer to the heart. That's also the source of the blood. So in this 
situation, the formation of the blood, also the relationship, the connection between the heart and the small intestines. So these are the relationship between these two. The next, the lung and the large intestine. This will many ref reflect in the water metabolism. And so the water me metabolism, the lung governs the qi, the qi, the qi flow. The large intestine, the function of the large intestine is to change transport to form the feces and then to pass pass through the feces and in this aspect we would need the water which is the, the water weight the characteristic of the lung so the water from the, the body the water from the lung from the middle jaw to the lung the lung disperses the water to all over the body when the lung disperses, the water also need to be dispersed to the large intestines. That's where the body fluids of the large intestines come from. This also will help the formation, the, the forming, and also the movement of the feces. It's also why for some constipation or some diarrhea. We can use cement towards the lung or large intestines, such as for diarrhea. We can use sweating, or we can use increase the urine. These treatments to treat the diarrhea, which is to reduce the body fluids in the large intestines. Or for the constipation patient. We can use treatments towards the, the lung to recover the function of the of the its its distribution of the water into the large intestine to help the the movement of the feces. That's the example we we have actually explained before. We found the boats and the river, the kind of thinking. So the stool. It's, con it's considered as the boat. There's no water in the river, so the boat will not move. In this condition, we will increase the fluid in the large, in large intestine, and then the feces can move away. And then the spleen and the stomach. The spleen and stomach also Coupled, coupled organs, receiving and transporting function, ascending and descending movement, coordinated between dryness and moisture. So, as you can see here, these are all the functions of spleen and stomach, receiving and transportation of the, the food and waters. These reflect in the trans the digestive, fun digestive function of the spleen and stomach. And as we discuss the spleen, the transportation and transformation, we said that the function actually involves the spleen, stomach, and small intestine. Actually include the whole digestive systems. So the receiving and transporting function of the spleen, also part of the function of the stomach. That's why we use, although we use different words, we said receiving and digest, decompose for the stomach. They are similar function. So these two functions in order to perform proper digestive, digestive function, we need proper organs. The second is the ascending and descending movements. The spleen governs the rise of clear, the clear qi. So the spleen moves something upwards. The stomach in charge of descending. It descends the foods and the water 
move downwards to the small intestine. So here, once ascending, once descending, one move something up, one move something down. These should be the balance. That's also the balance in our middle jaw. This is also the fundamental movements in our body, which can be similar to the hinge of the doors. You open the door, you close the door, the door doesn't change, but only the position. So that's the movements in middle jaw. From upper jaw and lower jaw, that's the movement in the middle jaw. One move up, one move down, then the circulation can be created. The last aspect is the co coordination between dryness and moisture. The spleen prefer dryness, the stomach prefer moisture, and they dislike each other. But this should be the balance. The dryness in the stomach will cause problem because the decomposing food will need water and body fluid, which is dampness. But the dampness will affect the spleen function. So these two, I mean, we need to find a balance between these two, between the dryness and the moisture. The organs should moist should be moisture, but not too dampness, too damp. The organ also need to be dry, but not too dry. So that's the balance between these two. That's exactly why in our treatments we should not focus on one organs only, such as someone suffer from the stomach ache. Then we saw that the stomach ache is due to lack of body fluids in the, in the stomach. So we use treatments to increase or to benefit to tonify the body fluids in the stomach. But in the meantime, we should not overdose because in this process, we need to think about this. the overdose of the body fluids will cause extra moisture, which is the dampness. And this dampness will affect the spleen. So that's in the pathological changes or in our clinical treatment, we need to think about both. That's why we, you see, we study many of the theories. We study all these theories to explain the complicated clinical symptoms, signs, phenomena. And we use these theories to analyze those phenomena. When we analyze, it's not one to, it's not A to B, it's A to multiple, or multiple to multiple. That's multiple sides, to aspects to multiple aspects. That's why we need to think more about the different functions, different relationships, different organs. The next, we're going to explain the liver and the gallbladder. The liver and gallbladder, these two are also coupled organs. The extra liver qi, the extra liver qi can generate into bio stored in the gallbladder. That's one of the relationship. And this, this bio can help the digestive function, which is the which is the, the result from the extra liver qi, the result of these two organs. The emotions or the 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 decision making. So the gallbladder dominates the decisions. But this decision, this dominate decision, is a part. It's a part of a kind of emotion. That's a feeling, as the mental or psychological psych cultural activities. So these psychological activities also related to the liver, which is in charge of the qi regulation. 
The last organs we're going to talk about is the kidney and blood. The kidney and the blood are many reflect in the, in the water metabolism, especially for the urine. The kidney, the kidney yang, steams the the qi or the the water, the liquid substance from the spleen, from the middle jiao, and then the waste of these materials we transform into urine, go to the kidney and store in the blood. And that's the the main relationship between these two. The kidney also can control the opening and closing of the, the bladder, which is in terms of the the movement of u urine, the function of urination. So that's the storing function of the kidney. That's why in clinical when we see in clinics, when we see the pathological changes of a patient with a problem with urination or problem related to external genilinia, these conditions, we always treat the kidney. That's because the, the kidney can help the, the blood in terms of the movements the formation and the movements the formation store storing and the movement of the urine in the field of the water metabolisms in the body so these are the relationship among different organs and actually these are just some of the examples of the relationship between different organs there are more and actually they also the combination of different organs as you can see when we explain this relationship sometimes we we repeat different different materials such as blood and qi we mentioned quite a few times we just in different way to say these two aspects so they actually multiple organs are involved in one process which means these five organs are also related to each other and in the next video we're going to have a short topic on the formation of the blood or the the movement of the breathing and digestive function what's the relationship how do we use these theories we're going to show you an example how do we use these theories to explain these physiological phenomena of our human body. That's the purpose of learning this, these theories. Okay, thank you guys.